Hey guys, it's Ashley and today we're gonna be crocheting. First, I wanted to explain a little bit about what I'm doing. So essentially, a lot of people do like chit chat, get ready with me videos, you know? And I really like watching those, but at the same time, I can't make them because I don't do half of what everyone else does when it comes to getting ready with me. So somebody suggested that I make a video where I just crochet on camera, but I decided to turn this into sort of a chit chat crochet with me sort of video because today I'm gonna be talking about some cover changes. What inspired me to wanna do this was the reveal for A Court of Silver Flames and that cover which we will get to shortly. So in essence, here we are. I've got my crochet project that I have actually already been working on for the past couple of weeks and I just sort of gave up when I finished my audiobook, but I'm determined to try to finish it here on camera. Um, this is what it is so far. It's actually a beanie. I've never actually done one of these with multiple colors before, so like I keep getting all the yarn tangled up. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm using size four yarn and I just got some dark orange color and some light pink color and I'm using a size 5.25 millimeter crochet hook. I, I literally just, I use whatever I have and I go for it and it's turned out okay so far. So let's get into this, shall we? So that those people who aren't into crochet don't have to listen to me go on about it anymore. The first cover change that I wanna talk about is obviously A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I feel like there's been lots of discussion on this already, so I'm not gonna to add too much to it. Essentially, I hate the new covers. So when these covers first came out, I actually really liked them. I thought that it was a good cover for the story itself. Like I thought that it, it did a good job of conveying like what was going to be in the story, AKA like, you know, it's a fantasy, it's got fey, like that kind of thing. But the new covers clearly are going for like a weird minimalistic design, which I can sort of get behind because they're still telling part of the story through the cover. So in the first cover, you can see where there's like a wolf and you can see where the wolf has been like stabbed or hit with an arrow, which is obviously part of the story and basically how the entire story starts. What I don't appreciate is the fact that they literally took that cover, that, that pretty first cover, and they literally made them all gray. Everybody has seen like the, the colorful versions of the covers with like the, the pink and the blue and the green and whatnot. Those are the paperbacks. The hard covers are literally all the same color. They're all gray. How boring is that? Like you go from the first cover being like, you know, cool, pretty, colorful, like they each have a different color, they have a person, like beautiful artwork, like that kind of thing. Like you go from that and then you get this. And I'm just sitting here like, why? Why was this necessary? I also kind of in a way understand because A Court of Thorns and Roses is more of a new adult series than it is young adult. It caters to a different sort of audience, but because Sarah J Mass is known as a YA author, a lot of these books have been pitched to a YA audience. So what I do appreciate about these covers is that they look less like a YA story than the other ones did. So that's the one reason that I can like appreciate Oh man, I messed up again. So none of that, none of what I said right then and there can be applied toward the cover for A Court of Silver Flames. I'm sorry and excuse my language, but what the fuck is this cover? Okay, before I go onto a raging rampage about how much I despise this cover, I do wanna say that I can appreciate certain aspects of it. I can appreciate the fact that they tried to make it sort of similar in a way to the like other new covers that they made. You know, they tried to go along in the same vein as that. And that's about the only thing that I can say about it because the rest of it I absolutely hate. First of all, it's got a gray background, just like all of the other hard covers of the new covers, which I cannot stand. I think that it's such a boring, like it just, it makes it look like they put no effort into it whatsoever. They were just like, what's the easiest, most basic cover color that we can use that will give like, nothing away and have no personality whatsoever. And somebody was like, I think you should use the gray that is in the background of the Photoshop app. And they were like, yes, you got, you are the winner. We're gonna use that idea. And it was like, why? Why would you do that? I'm being really loud and I'm sure my whole family can hear me. So sorry, family. But why would you, why, 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 why? 
why. But I'm just, I'm not gonna really like think about it too much more because I just don't wanna have to look at this cover anymore. So um, I think we're just gonna move on. This next stitch that I'm doing is like kind of annoying and hard. So I gotta like concentrate real quick. It's color change. So the next cover that I wanna talk about is The Diviners by Libba Bray, which I know that people have had like their discourse on it. This has been a long time cover change disaster, but I've never talked about it specifically because I've never read The Diviners up until this year. So let's talk about it, shall we? The first cover everybody says is the best cover, and I can totally see that after like seeing the other covers. To be quite honest, I'm a bit confused about what is the new cover, and what is the old cover, and what is the third cover that I somehow keep finding everywhere. I'm very, very, very confused by it. We have this one with like the big letters on the front. You've got like the people standing below and it's just like, that's probably my least favorite cover. But then the, the third one that I found, which I can't tell, is this the most recent cover or is the one with the people on the front the most recent cover? I'm very confused. Is the one that has like the square around it and the beads on the front, is that the one that's like, is that a paperback cover and like the one with the big words and the people and that's a hard cover or are these just like two completely different covers that don't have anything to do with one another? I'm so confused. I'm really surprised that with the amount of love that people have given this original cover that the publisher doesn't try to make like new additions trying to like bring back that cover art. I'm just saying, you would think that they would want to sell more books and I feel like people would jump at the chance to buy a full set of these books with the original covers. You'd probably make a lot of money. Okay, so the next one that I have on this list is another one that people have probably already talked about but I've never talked about it myself so I'm gonna put it in here. That's an ember in the ashes. I don't really have too much of an opinion on whether I like the new ones or the old ones better. Like I feel like the old ones felt very like high fantasy to me. The newer ones, the new covers, I do appreciate because A, they're white, which we actually don't get a lot of white covered books when it comes to fantasy. And I also appreciate the fact that we have Laia right on the cover of the first book and she's a person of color. We don't normally get people of color on books, even though that has been a growing trend recently now that we're finally beginning to diversify books and covers. I do appreciate those new covers because of those reasons. But again, I don't, I don't truly have a preference for either one. I feel like the newer covers feel more YA than the older covers, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it is a YA series. So the next covers I want to talk about are actually the Graceling covers by Kristen Kishore because they just really recently got cover changes now that they announced that there is a fourth book in this world that's going to be coming out. I personally actually really like the new covers. I've definitely noticed a trend more so leaning toward more illustrated covers than the previous like photography-ish covers. So I've really liked that. And I think that might be why I'm leaning toward liking these covers. They just they just have a lot going on. They're really colorful. There's just something super boring about the last covers. I'm definitely leaning toward liking these ones because I think, like I said, they're colorful. They sort of catch your eye and there's a lot to look at. So I'm really, really liking these. I am going to riot. They just started mowing our lawn. So I'm gonna have to pause here and come back when they're not mowing the lawn while I'm filming a video. Okay, I'll be back guys. <laughs> okay, we're officially back. It's been about, I wanna say an hour. The lawnmowers are gone, so we've got silence again. I will say that I did manage to actually finish the, the beanie. So now all I have to do is just stitch it all together and make it into an actual beanie. Um, so that's fun. In that video that I said I was gonna link down below that like is like the instructions of how to make this hat. I actually didn't watch the part where she, she stitched it together. So I'm just gonna do this in the best way that I know how and we're just going to hope beyond all hope that I'm doing this correctly. <laughs> so the next covers that I wanna talk about are actually the Red Scrolls of Magic and the Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. They started off with covers that were really different from the Mortal Instruments and all of her other series um, to try to differentiate them from the other books that she's written, but then they just went and they made covers that matched the rest of the series that she's written. So I think that making covers that were originally different were kind of pointless, even though I honestly prefer the original different covers better. With the new 
covers that they've issued for the Mortal Instruments, for the Infernal Devices, the ones that have the cover art on the spine. When it comes to those, like, these don't match the new covers that they've issued for those. But like I said, personally, I prefer the original ones that were kind of drawn, just because it kind of sets it apart from the rest of her series that she's written. This is obviously a book that she's written with somebody else. It's considered adult, so I feel like separating it from the rest of her series was a good move. Um, but I know how some people feel about their covers not matching when it's the same author, so I I know that this is kind of like a pointless one to put in here because they do make like reversible covers for these books but I wanted to add it in because I just wanted to let everybody know I prefer the original ones better. <laughs> so I actually want to do a couple rounds of Rick Riordan books so let's start with the Percy Jackson series I guess because this is the like first series obviously. I am always gonna have a soft spot in my heart for the original covers. I think that the artwork was beautiful. The best way to describe it is like if you look at the cover for the Battle of the Labyrinth, the colors mixed with like the lighting mixed with like the atmospheric like feeling you get when you see that cover. That's like the best to me. Now the new covers for Percy Jackson, which were actually issued, I wanna say a couple years ago, I don't mind. They still give that kind of like action adventure theme sort of thing. And in addition, um, they're actually supposed to be a continuation of one long piece of artwork. So if you line the covers up side by side, not their spines, I don't know if their spines create a photo, but if you line the actual covers up, I'll put a photo like here for you, and it actually makes an image, which I think is kind of cool. Now at the same time, when is anybody actually going to line up their books like that on the shelf to be able to show that cover design? I really don't think that's ever gonna happen. Um, also, because they're all part of one big image, I think that they all look the same to me. So I'm not the biggest fan. I'm always going to, like I said, have a soft spot in my heart for the original covers, but I'm not horribly against these ones. Um, but I do much prefer the original ones. I do have something to say about the recovers of the Heroes of Olympus because y'all, they did that series dirty and I am so, so sad about it. So um, the original covers, obviously for the Heroes of Olympus, if you know of them, they're super bright, they're colorful, there's a lot going on. They're, the artwork matches that of um, Magnus Chase, it matches the Trials of Apollo, it has that really nice, bright, colorful action feel to it, right? I have nothing against the designer or like the illustrator of the new covers, they just do not do it any justice compared to the original ones and I'm so sad that they decided to like reissue these books or like redraw them like there was literally no need to redesign these covers they were great so I have no idea why they decided to do this I genuinely do not like these covers compared to the other ones the Kane Chronicles are the last Rick Riordan covers that I want to talk about so like the original cover was like super bright it matched the Heroes of Olympus it matched Magnus Chase and Trials of Apollo, it matched all of that. But the new covers, I actually don't mind. I don't know, I've always thought of the King Chronicles as pretty different from Percy Jackson. Oh, it's so hard. So like, even though Magnus Chase is also different from Percy Jackson because Norse mythology versus Greek and Roman versus Egyptian, like, but they're all technically in the same world. I would have expected to like the original covers better because they actually matched all of his other series. But I actually don't mind the more like minimalistic versions of the Kane Chronicles. Also, I don't know if these covers that I'm showing on the screen are just for the paperback or if they're also for the hardcover. I feel like they're just for paperback. But yeah, I don't I don't mind the minimal ones, the ones that I have at least. I actually really like them. You wanna know one cover that I feel like I don't need to talk about because this cover change happened so long ago, but like I actually, I do wanna talk about it just because. Um, Throne of Glass, because they changed this cover like literally when I think the second book came out or like before the second book came out, they just realized that that first cover was god awful. I was not in that like era when they had that original cover, but I god do I hate that original cover. The one with the girl's face on it. Oh my goodness. They definitely did a good thing by changing the cover. I'm so glad that I never owned that book that had that cover because I just literally would have thrown it in the garbage. I'm sorry. The last cover that I want to talk about in this video is actually this Savage Song. So I mentioned this book in another one of my videos. I think it was books I want to reread because it's been a very long time since I've read this story. I do want to say that I actually really love this cover redesign. I did really enjoy the first batch of covers that they did for this. I think that it went really well with the story. It had like a very dark 
feel to them. It still had like the musical elements and then the like calligraphy on the front was just really beautiful. So all in all, I really did love the original covers, but personally, the like redesigns on them, I think are just really beautiful. You can clearly see August at the bottom, like playing the violin and it's got like the big wings that also kind of resemble like harps in a way, which again is like a musical element sort of thing. But it, I don't, I don't know. It's like, it's very beautiful and very like elegant while also remaining like monstrous if that makes sense somehow i got my yarn all knotted together which is not fun but yeah um i really like the new covers every time i see them in stores i like want to buy them really badly because i think that they're just really pretty and um i have to stop myself from buying them because i'm not spending money and uh yeah you guys i think that's pretty much it those are all the covers that i had picked at least i know that there are dozens of more covers that i got redesigned i tried to stay the books that I've either read the first book of or I've read like a little bit of them. If you guys have a like particular book or series that got a cover redesign that you're either really happy about or you don't like as much, if I didn't mention it here, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, let me know how you feel about A Court of Silver Flames because I'm um, happy for the book, excited for the book, I hate the cover. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video, you guys. If you are interested in following me on any of my socials, all of my handles are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye! I finished it. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's cute. I don't know. I'm not really a beanie person, so I don't know why I made this, but, you know, maybe sometime in the future. <laughs>